Welcome everybody at 6.30 and we're going to have a public hearing. As mayor, it's my duty to enforce order. Officer Call and Eubanks are the sergeant of arms and will assist in maintaining order. Those wishing to speak about the budget will be recognized for three minutes. You must limit your comment to the budget. Each person will be permitted to speak once so that everyone can have an opportunity to be heard. In no event will the public hearing last longer than one hour. Unless you are recognized by me and granted permission to speak, you are not to address the board or otherwise make any verbal noises that can be heard by any member of this board during these proceedings. If you do so, I will proceedings. declare you out of order. If you are present and being if you are out of order, your conduct will be deemed substantial interference with these proceedings. Thereupon, you will be removed from these chambers. You may also face criminal charges proceed to TCA 39-17-306. It is my sincere hope that everyone participating in these proceedings will that everyone themselves in a polite in manner with respect shown to all regardless of disagreement. We will start the uh, public hearing. Anybody wish you to speak, come to the podium and uh, state your name and your address. Good evening. Um, for the public hearing, I want to talk about uh, the budget and how it's going to affect the safety of the citizens that you're supposed to represent. And we've recently had a shooting back in my neighborhood, kind of close to my house. Um, there's a lot of things that go on, and I know what happens in all cities as far as crime. But when it comes to the safety of citizens, I think that should be our utmost concern. Why, why, how can you have fun in a splash pad or in a park or anywhere else, even in your own backyard, if you're concerned about crime and not having the sufficient amount of police officers or the sufficient amount of firemen. I've had a fire myself in my own home in 2006, and it was a stupid mistake walking out to the grill and leaving okra frying on the stove, you know, and getting distracted. That's what happens to us old people sometimes, and we have to call the fire department. Our fire department came in record time and did an excellent job, but if there had been other fires in the neighborhood or across town, it probably would have not turned out very well. And what I'm saying is we can't always control emergencies. And police officers may not be a lot of fun, and our firemen might not be a lot of fun like you can have at a splash pad. But I tell you what, when you need one and they're not there, you realize how important they are. And when we're short-staffed like that, it not only affects the citizens, it also affects the safety of the officers and the firemen. And I would not want that on my conscience if any one of them got injured or killed because there wasn't enough men to handle the job. And it can happen. Right now they're going above and beyond the duty. And we just need to help our citizens stay safe. And we need to put the fun stuff and the bells and whistles on a back burner until we can get our city in order and have the right amount of staff for all departments. And that includes our Senior Citizen Center. That's an important little group too. They've worked hard and they deserve the best that we can offer them down there at the Senior Centers. And, and I just wish that everybody could have a splash pad in their own neighborhood, you know, but that's not a reality. I used to ask you guys for a community center. I'm not wanting a community center until we can get the other things that are vital and the basic necessities that our city needs. And I'm asking for you all to consider that and think about the citizens, think about the employees, think about the firemen, and, and think, you know, how you would feel if something terrible happened and somebody died and you knew you could have made a difference and you could have helped. And also another thing, if I've got any more time left on the bell, do I? We need to back codes up. Codes is working their tail off and they don't have the backup they need to enforce the rules. Thank you. Thank you. Next, anybody wants to speak 
Uh, get up now and speak. State your name and your address. My name is Tony Fanetta. I live at 131 Greenwood Drive, I think. Yeah. And um, yesterday I done something that I kind of regretted. I posted all of the city's employee salary on Facebook, which I was, abs I mean, I was absolutely shocked. Do y'all know what they do? Do y'all know what they do? It's appalling at what they get paid. I mean, once I started looking and then I seen all the high paying salaries and all they do is sit here to some extent and make decisions and they're out keeping us safe. They don't get paid to drive around in their cars for that much. And people want to gripe about, oh, the city pays for their benefits. Really? The city should pay them more and their benefits. Thank you. Anyone else wants to speak? Good afternoon, Mayor Alderman. I'd like to discuss uh, some of the issues with the I have with the 2017-2018 budget. Uh, before I open my discussion, I want to uh, I want to teach you guys a definition of collusion. Secret or illegal cooperation or conspiracy to especially in order to cheat or deceive others. In my opinion, I think that's exactly what you do, Mayor Waldron. I think, uh, I think you, you cheat and deceive others, taxpayers of our city. One of the ways I feel that you're deceiving others is the $25,000 that you're allowing the rescue squad to have, which is the nonprofit agency that has no responsibility whatsoever performing any duties in our city per your department heads at the last workshop meetings. So you do a little research, you go back and, and you find in 2014 where I see there the cooperation and conspiracy is, you know, they assisted uh, Alderman Brown in her um, campaign celebration, you know, which is they're a nonprofit, but yet they promoted a elected official that was running or uh, a citizen that was running for an office. So a year ago, I filed charges against the two of you and the district attorney came back and said there was no um, illegal acts done. However, he did state that it was... Um, you know, could be <laughs> deceiving. So what, what my problem is, we have nine officers in the boardroom to protect you tonight. We normally don't have nine officers on the street to protect 34,000 people. So that's also a problem. I mean, it, it all goes back to the dollar. But Mayor Waldron, you've done really well over your years in Laverne financially, but the, the money you're giving away doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the taxpayers of Laverne. And we're getting close. You're at that line now where I, I think uh, we need a couple more people to step up and, um, you know, hopefully we can prove that uh, the collusion exists with you and certain parties of your board. If you can go after the President of the United States, you don't think we can go after you? Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak? Seeing nobody get up to speak, I'm going to call this public hearing closed. I appreciate everybody speaking. Uh, we got a 640, so we'll call the public hearing closed and start the sit-in form at 6.45.